You're listening to Out There with Jeff Rector. Jeff Rector. Welcome to Out There, the show that focuses on the genres of science fiction, fantasy, and horror on television, the big screen, the media, the internet, and everywhere else in the universe. Sit down in your favorite electric chair, pour yourself a pint of blood, and open your psychic connection because you're connected to Out There. Welcome to another episode of Out There here at UNE Go Studios across from Warner Brothers. I have with me Isaac C. Singleton Jr. The fans love you. Listen to that. Love being here at the the new studio. I was with uh, LA Talk Radio for years, but this is my new home. I'm super excited. Um, Tony, no no applause for you. Uh, sure. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> hey, whoop! <Tony>. Whoop! <laughs> you got a whoop. Uh, Isaac, great to see you. We've been friends for for many many years. Yes, nice Isaac to see you too. C. Singleton Jr. What C stand for? Charles. My middle name, yes, Charles. Uh, your dad was in the. Uh, you said was in the aerospace industry. Well, that was when I was born. But then he transitioned from that and became an optometrist. After he became an optometrist, and he joined the Air Force. Then we started to travel around and got a chance to move overseas, and I graduated high school in Germany. And wow, I love traveling. So yeah, Sprechen Sie Deutsch? Ich kann ein bisschen, aber nicht viel. And du? That's all I know. I, <laughs> I mean, I can speak a little bit of German, but I'm not fluent. Wiener yeah. Schnitzel. That's <laughs> all I. That's all I know. My dad was actually stationed in uh, Germany. Did you get a chance to go too, or was that before uh, you were born? That was before I was born. Ah, yes, you that was out. just a glint in his eye. Mm-hmm. Back in those days, but uh, but he loved it over. And I, actually, we talked about. We'll, we'll get into it later about conventions and stuff. But mm-hmm. I've been to uh, Germany three times on these uh, Star Trek science fiction conventions. Yeah, congrats. So they, they fly like you over, they put you up, and um, yes, they you do. drink lots of beer. It's uh, Bavaria. It's pretty good. So. Um, well, talk about the aerospace. I'm interested in that. What, what, what did he do in the aerospace program? We worked for a company called RCA, and RCA had one of the contracts that was helping when we went to the moon. So he worked in that. And uh, He was part of the moon project. How? Yeah, he's a smart man. Interesting yeah. is that. He was a math major in college, would he got his degree in. And, and when he saw that uh, the space industry was kind of starting to die down, he saw these guys who were in their 40s and late 30s being fired off, and they had families. He said, hmm, what can I do where I won't get fired? Or if I get fired, I've got my <laughs> yeah. own skill set I can't be fired from. He said, okay, I'll become an optometrist. You do that in the private sector, or you can do it in the military. And what he did is he said, okay, I'll become an optometrist. I was a small child then, so we decided to move to Tennessee. Right. In aerospace, when they fire you, they send you off on a missile. They do? And you're never heard from again. Yeah, like oh, just, that's just, what happened to my neighbors. Yeah. Oh, okay. Into space. <laughs> that's the last <laughs> <laughs> Whatever happened to how he got fired. Uh, you're the king of genre. You do a ton of voiceover work. If I had this guy's, just say hello. Hello. If I had this guy's voice, I'd be working more. I'm telling you right now. You've done a ton of the uh, video games, Halo. Lord of the Rings, you play Thanos at yes. a lot of the uh, the Marvel. You're in the Marvel universe. Yes, I am. I love playing Thanos. <laughs> How exciting is that? All together, yeah. I want to be in the Marvel universe. I want more of the Marvel universe. I got to be <laughs> yeah, in yeah, Deadpool yeah. too. That was Marvel universe also. But yeah. How many of the games have you played Thanos? At least five or six, right? I have. I don't even count them. I just don't. They, they just call, cash they the checks. Have job. You have, don't have call to call me count up them. and say, "Let me come in and do it." And I'll do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's been well, fun. Well, that's great. It's a great voice to do. You know, I enjoy it. And he gets to say a lot of good lines that the good guys can't say. He says something along the lines of, "You are things, things annoy me, me, but your but screams of fear and confusion do amuse me." You may you continue, continue those. those. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Mm-hmm. Thanos, a Thanos. man in, a, in his glove. Yeah, my gauntlet, the Infinity, Infinity Gauntlet. gauntlet. 
the infinity <laughs> gauntlet. He just has a different opinion about things, and he's and he figures just let him do what he wants to do, and everything would be just fine. If everybody yeah. just gave him his way, the Don't world would be Don't screw with Thanos, and you're okay. Just do what I want you to do. That's all you got to do. It's fine. It's not a bad thing. Well, we talked about this. I love playing bad guys. The good guy's easy, right? The bad guy's where you get to make some fun choices. Yes. But the bad guy thinks they're the good guy. They don't, in their own mind, they're the, you know, they're doing us. He's trying to save the universe, right? He is. All he, he's trying to make sure there's enough resources to go around. <laughs> so if you get rid of half the population, <laughs> you got to wipe out a few around. worlds in That's the process. All. That's that's all it is. It's, it's all about balance, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Everybody gets a nice fair share. There's no <laughs> arguing, no more fighting over anything. No more, no more wars, right? Yeah. Just decimation. Yes. You're just, your planet's done. It doesn't hurt. You snap a finger, <laughs> you disappear, you float off into the distance. You go to some other realm somewhere, and uh, everybody on this realm gets to eat more and have more fun and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. It's great. Better than cancer. Just a snap <laughs> of the finger and then and you're gone. That's that's great. I've actually had you were at my uh, had my holiday party. This is our uh, holiday special, folks. By the way, we're right in the middle of uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas. I had Naomi Grossman on uh, last show. It was our uh, Halloween horror show. This is our our holiday show. I had a party last night. I. I because I have all the Christmas decorations, I had my Thanos glove hidden. I saw. I got it on a your, Thanos saw, glove. The uh, the, the Infinity, Infinity Stones light up and everything. I saw it on your shelf. It's I should have had you put it on. Everyone would would have loved to have taken a picture. I pointed out to some other Thanos. Girls. Pick a stone. Mm hmm. <laughs> it was fun. We had a good turnout. I had a great time. It was fun. Nice people. Nice conversations. Good food. So you're in the the Marvel. You made it in the Marvel universe. Not many yeah. people can say that, but it's a great ride when you get in there. Yeah. I have to ask: Can you do DC? Is there any contractual thing? No, there's no contractual thing whatsoever. I mean, there's not like Marvel's going to say, "Hey, he was in our universe, and I can't go to yours." <laughs> I'm sure they can do a crossover if they want. We're, see, we're seeing, yeah, we're seeing a lot of actors that yeah. are that are in both universes. So yeah, so why would but, it not? But they're yeah. main stars, so it's mm -hmm. like you're gonna. Tell Henry Cavill he can't do a Marvel project. He's not going to be Superman. Did you hear that? I did not hear this, no. James Gunn has taken over uh, Marvel, him and his partner, and they're, they're saying that Henry Cavill will not be coming back as Superman. They're developing a new uh, a film project where it's the younger Clark Kent coming up through Metropolis and being the... Uh, Mild-mannered reporter from a great metropolitan newspaper. Okay, but he's going to be... And so it's going to be younger, and, and so the older Superman, I guess, won't be there. A yeah, lot of uproar. Not that old, a lot though. of uproar from the fans, but... Uh, yeah, Henry's not very old, so I don't understand, but okay. But, yeah. but that's, well, he's not 20s. No, well, he's I, not, I got a buddy He's not in his 30s. I think that's what they're, they're got, going for, the, the younger Superman. Um <laughs> You made it. You're in the Star Wars universe too. I love this guy, yes. Mandalorian. I love yeah, that I've, show. I've done a few voices for them also. So yeah, I've done a few things. And uh, you were Twi'lek. Yeah, the Twi'lek Dorman. And the Twi'lek is really just a, a race Twi'lek. of people also, and they just have the Leku, which is that fleshy uh, tentacle that grows in the back of the head. So that's what they are. And is that what they're calling it these days? They're called I... Leku. Yeah, that's what those things are called. And uh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, that's all I'm going to say about that one. I, fleshy tentacles aren't my thing, but uh, but that's great. No, I love the show. Uh, Pedro Pascal is yeah. uh, is is terrific. He actually got to take his helmet off. I was like, what? He's going to wear the helmet the, the whole series? Well, yeah, he got to take it off, which is great. You know, but then but he that... lost his uh, his standing, right? Well, In the Mandalorians, because you're never supposed to take, to take the helmet off. Yes, I know, but. He did it for a good cause, so that's why, yeah. Yeah, the ratings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Not> the, <laughs> the Disney ratings. Who's under the helmet? You know, but that's uh, a great show to work on. Oh, it's a it's... great team. John Favreau knows exactly what he's doing, and he does an excellent job at it. 
He got to direct the episode that I was in. Oh, that's cool. And I really enjoyed everybody that was on that set. It was a lot of fun. It ran very smoothly. Everybody got along well. No one's yelling, nothing at all. It was really well-run, oiled machine. So I had hats off to them and for what they've created because the fans love it. I know they do. It wasn't like a James Cameron set. There was no yelling. I've never been on James Cameron's very... set before, so I, I have no idea what that set's like. I understand there's a lot of yelling. Oh, okay. But at the end of the day, when it makes billions of dollars and, and wins awards, nobody, yeah. nobody, nobody complains, right? He's an amazing director, don't get me wrong. James I, I, Cameron is He, he is amazing. He so, when you went, so you went into The Mandalorian... It was all hush hush, right? Because it's top secret. It was uh, they told you it was called Huckleberry. Well, the, the bottom line is, whenever you work on a lot of these shows, unfortunately, <laughs> my agent sent that, me out but, for Huckleberry. What the? What's no, my agent doing? Unfortunately, these days the fans want spoilers all the time. They're always trying to f- sneak on the set, take pictures, all that kind of stuff. So now it's like you got to give it a code name just so the fans don't spoil it for everybody else who don't want spoilers. That's the number one thing. So you don't let the fans know what's going on. They release it, and then the fans are really happy because then they get to see a great show, but they didn't have any spoilers happen. I mean, that happened to me when I was even working on that uh, J.J. Abrams show when he was doing the, the first Star Trek. They had to have me sequestered. Even when they drove me to, the, to, uh, to go to get lunch or whatever, they had to have me in a hidden, like, it was a golf cart that had like a blank cone of silence and uh they would drive me pull me inside the drive me inside the sound stage close the doors before i can get out because they don't want them what they know what the makeup looked like for for the klingons even though the klingons got cut out of that movie i had a great time working on that set too you got cut out the, all the klingons got cut out we were just referenced in the first one because the movie was so long they how cut many the days did you have on it Shoot, I don't remember now, but it was a, a good week? amount of time. It was more than a week because I had to go through makeups and all that kind of stuff, too, just alone for that. I, so. I did Star Trek The Next Generation, two and a half hours of makeup. I mean, those some of those characters are grueling. But to do all that work and to get cut out, you know, hey, Mom, I'm going to be Star No, nah, see, Trek. that's another thing I don't. I don't tell my parents. I don't tell anybody in the shows I'm getting ready to do because you never know what's going to happen, happen, right? So, I mean, I just I have so many stories of friends who were on shows and then they – the show gets released and they're not even in the show because oh, their know. parts it's got cut out. So I don't even happens. tell anybody about what I'm doing anymore because I don't have to go through the whole thing about telling them how, oh, well, I did this, but then right. this happened or whatever. I just don't. You know, that way nobody has, nobody's expecting anything whenever I don't tell them anything. That's did how you I get do some it. pictures in the makeup, though? Didn't do it because I had signed a non-disclosure agreement because they didn't want anybody to Well, we did pictures. too, but we still took pictures. We <laughs> snuck around the corridor or the... Enterprise. Well, I uh, stuck with the contract pictures. because that was my word saying I wouldn't yeah. do this. So that's what happened with me. But hey, I don't. <laughs> I didn't give him my word. I just I signed the contract and I. <laughs> there was no verbal. Well, no verbal. <laughs> just a finger. I was saying, yeah, just, <laughs> no verbal. Uh, did did they ever release the? You know, sometimes they do the outtakes, right? They did. Did, they, this, did they put that online? In, so there's a scene of me interrogating this guy. I've got him and pinned down. I'm interrogating him, and then um, they've got that on some of the uh, DVDs that came out on the DVDs or Blu-ray. not on YouTube, but on the, the extra Blu-ray. features. Yeah, the extra features on the, on the DVD. Blu-ray. Now that's yeah. cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you got the footage then, right? No, nah, because it, cause it was like a foreground, background kind of a shot. So oh. I didn't use it. But I mean, I, but like I said, I mean, I'm I'm always a guy. That's, I'm not worried about the footage and getting the footage for myself. I'm just thinking about the next I product. Am. I'm always thinking about the I next project. I want to see myself. <laughs> yeah, there's a few movies out there. It helps, you know, for the for the reels and stuff. But Yeah, there's a few movies out there right now I've never seen that I'm in. Did you get residuals? Yeah, got residuals. That? Though. See, that's what's great about the mm-hmm. Screen Actors Guild. Even though mm-hmm. you get cut out. Yeah. In a feature film, you still get residuals. I had two scenes with Julia Roberts in Pretty Woman. Wound up on the cutting room floor. You still get the residuals. That's good. Thank you, Gary Marshall. What did you do? God bless you. Were you like some guy I was a store? pool boy. No, I was the pool boy. I, uh, she came into the Beverly Hills Hotel, and I, I came up to her and Laura San Giacomo. I said, what, what do you guys want for lunch? Caesar salad. Okay. And you? So I had a couple of lines there, mm-hmm. and then um, <laughs> I had a line at the pool. She comes down to the pool, and she goes, uh, where do you want me to seat, William? I go, anywhere you like. 
That, two scenes. That was a scene. Was right that, that, that's Julia Roberts. One line. That's a scene, baby. <laughs> but uh, but but Gary used a lot of people that wound up getting cut out of it. Okay. But, but he probably knew that. But you know, it was a favor to us, and and uh, uh, he, he was, he was also, very good to me. <clears throat> but then you never know because I know a lot of directors like to shoot a lot of different stuff, so that yep. when it comes to the cutting the film together and stuff you might keep and something you might not keep. Yeah, you never know. It's all, got, it's all you know. part of the process. You were in clown fear yes, as yes. big. Well, you're not going to be little. That's for sure. Oh, so it's just big, not even big it clown just said, No, it just says big. Okay, That yeah. was the I am <laughs> Yes, I was a big clown, clown in this movie called Clown Fear. Big is probably better than big clown, I think. Yeah, yeah I guess so. It was it a horror film? What was that? It was a horror picture, yes. It's a, you know, the... Stereotypical girls, carnival horror film. Girls leave Vegas because they're upset because the marriage didn't take place like it was supposed to. They drive back through the desert. They break Got down. Got tired of dancing. Break down near a little town that's full of clown people. <laughs> clown. And uh, they try to a get their car fixed. town of clowns. Yeah. The girl who wrote the <laughs> film wrote it because she was driving through the desert in Nevada and there was an actual clown hotel out there that she stopped off at. <laughs> and all the motif in this hotel Quit was clowning clown around. Stuff. Get and back so to she, work. Um, started that way. The clown hotel. Yeah, and that's how she got the idea to write this movie. The yeah. maid's dress got a red nose and <laughs> orange hair. And clowns all over, clown make, clown <laughs> bed sheets, I mean, wallpaper, chopskis, everything. That's so crazy. Great. So I knew one of my first scenes you see me in, there's a girl that she's in this the room showering, obviously, and uh, the clown. Obviously. And uh, this little clown had a little clown. He was a little person. He came and he's Little person, little clown. He's missing her. And you were she, big clown, little clown comes in. Anyway, as she turns around and screams, I stab her in the mouth with a knife. Oh, a big I love mouth. it. That's how she gets killed. So, yeah. <laughs> But it was fun. It was fun to do. <laughs> it was a fun fear. movie. I love it. Oh. <laughs> Cut. Oh, that was a winner. Moving on. Took it and got it in two takes. <laughs> two takes. The, line, the knife lined up perfectly with her mouth and stabbed through the back of her head. Yeah. It was, it was uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. As Thanos too. What a great franchise that's that's turned out to be, huh? Yeah, well, it was the cartoons. It was in Disney XD, so I did Guardians of the Galaxy and Avengers Assemble. Both Thanos came into both of those worlds, and I got to play him for those cartoons also. It was great. I mean, I loved doing cartoons because everybody in the cartoon is in the room together, and so we're reading it almost like a table read. Now, I got to ask, is it Chris Pratt? Is it a lot of the, the regular cast? Do they sub out some of the, the main stars? No, the cartoons were all, all, all the cartoons were the people they hired to play the cartoons. So like, you know how Josh Brolin played Thanos in the movies. Right, right. I do it for the So they were different movie. voices, so different, different voices. voice so actors. So Thor was a different guy, Hulk was a different guy. All of those people were not the ones that are in the film. I bet you Josh Brolin is wishing he decided to do the cartoons. Man, I'm losing out on a lot of business. I should have said yes. Well, the cartoons came out before me. the movies did. Did As they? A matter of fact, yeah. The cartoons were out before oh, the movies did. Yeah, so. Shows you what I know about mm -hmm. kitty animation. But it was good times. Mm. It's been a while. It's much more fun when you're in the room with everybody and you can interact, right? And, it is. And it's, play it's, off each other and, and the energy. It's... Uh, that's a lot more fun. It is a good time. All the jokes are being cracked while the uh, producers and the uh, and the director are on the other side of the glass going through the screen, and then they then they get back on the mics. Okay, everybody, we're going to go back through line twenty through forty, and uh, or whoever's in those lines, they stand up and they do their they give us a direction. We do the lines and we wait for them to tell us what they want us to do next. It was great, a lot Absolutely. of fun. Absolutely, I did I did my first podcast. Two years ago, it was called The Oval Office, okay. and it was about the White House, Trump in the White House. They cast me as Trump, and, you know, I knew nothing about it. It was with Blumhouse, who does all the big horror movies, okay. and it was their first podcast, and I'm like, oh, well, I'm, you know, I'm with, in with Blumhouse, but they had these top a voiceover, and, and these guys can do a million voices, and they were doing all the characters, mm -hmm. and um, and that was fun to to be in the room, you know. Yeah, I understand. I was the best president ever. 
four years, didn't happen, didn't work. But um, uh, but it was it was like it was like you were fly on the wall in the White House. And so all and and literally every week they would write it based upon what was actually happening oh, really? at the time. So it was completely on on the mark with whatever was happening in real life. So if something happened, then they they'd put it into the script. So was there was, a comedy spin wild. or a horror? Spin no, it was it was comedy. It was it was funny. It okay. was funny as hell. Um, I think the uh, the executive producer did Friday Night Lights. He was a a a, a, a big deal in TV, and um, but uh, they thought it was you know going to go really big. But you know sometimes political stuff doesn't uh, go over so well. And but you, it's funny that you mentioned Friday Night Lights because I don't know how much you know about Texas at all. Uh, the chili. That's about Texas. I mean, and the Longhorns. That's what I know about. Well, Texas loves their football, and especially Cowboys, high, especially high school football. And uh, I did live in Texas for a while too. I lived there my eighth through uh, tenth grade years of high school, and uh, it was. I the show was pretty accurate as far as how much high, high school football is touted and how much it's loved. And I mean, we would sometimes get out on a Friday half day. After a pep rally, we'd go home, get ready for the, I'm, I'm the game. I'm assuming you night. played high school football. Not, not what? in Texas. I didn't play until I got to Germany. When we moved to Germany, that's when I started playing football in my 11th grade year of high school. That's so, yeah, crazy. Play, Did I you play, play baseball or anything? Baseball was my best sport. I grew up playing baseball from age 9 until I was 16. What <clears> position? I played at least everything at least once. I only pitched one time because we had a substitute come in that day and he wanted me to be the pitcher and I was like well I'm not a pitcher but okay and I pitched not well took him out after one inning because I don't pitch I but screamed I, and yelled <laughs> to be the pitcher and he put me in and uh, it, was, it was fun but I they didn't like the results my favorite position was probably first base I love playing first base and then when I got older I was well, out you don't have outfield. to move much you're right there by the base yeah but you get to control the <laughs> thing you get to catch the ball Just you get to the throw catch and the ball and touch where the going, base. you know get things going <laughs> It's not like outfield where you got to run. Well, outfield, you I don't have to run in the that outfield. much. It was fun. I love mm-hmm. playing outfield. Yeah, that's why I played I when I got fast. older. So. And a good arm, too. So, But you played football in Germany. Yeah, when I, got, when I was high school in Germany, I played football there. Because we have American high schools over there. And we had three divisions. Really? Yeah, the three divisions of high schools. Interesting. So you got small, medium, and large high schools. And our, our school won the championship in Germany when I was a junior. It was great. Did you play the other European countries? Uh, what was all these, like, we had Army bases and Air Force bases over there. Right. So you play against the other Army bases and Air Force bases, their high schools. There are high schools all over Germany that are American high schools, Department of Defense high schools. Aren't those guys a little more fit because they're in the military and they... Well, no, they're not in the military. They're just like, it's just like the dependents. Oh, 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 the, oh the, they're, they're on the base. They're on they're the military the bases, of the right? Kids they're just who kids. are the uh, people gotcha, who are in the Air Force right. or the Army. The parents are military. Yeah, the parents are military. Kids are kids. So just kids. Yeah. What position did you play in football? I was a nose guard and also was a linebacker. I'd be protecting my nose too if I, I was playing football. Well, just put your helmet it's on. Your it's got a face broke. mask in front of it. Oh, right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> helps, to, <laughs> helps to have a helmet, doesn't it? Not those... like those leather ones back in the day <laughs> with no leather, face mask. Like a leather thing and nothing in the front. I'm <laughs> yeah, like, like, okay. I'm glad we didn't play football <laughs> then. <laughs> a lot of concussions uh, oh, back yeah. in the day with that sport. Uh, you're on the Bay, a friend of ours, the uh, Gregory Martin. Mm-hmm. It's a uh, a soap based um, TV series. Yes, I they won that. like 18 Emmy awards. They have. It's it's unbelievable. Every year, I'm a. Uh, um, are you with the TV Academy? I'm not. I haven't. You got to join. I, people tell me I should join. I'm thinking about doing. You got to join. Or you're a voting Emmy member. You get to watch all the. You get DVDs or online okay. viewings of all the shows. A lot of parties and, and FYC events for your consideration. So there's food and there's drinks and mm, I like and parties. you get to network. Yeah, mm. not bad for a couple of hundred buck membership. Mm, okay. And they for another seventy five bucks you get the uh, Film Society, where they do uh, screenings on the weekends of first run movies. So it's a uh, that's my tip of the day. All right, join then. the TV Academy. But that's how I know those guys from uh, from the TV Academy. I've been in consideration 
for okay. an Emmy a few times. Well, congrats to you. Didn't win. They say it's just as good to be in consideration. No, no, you really got to win. And you got to. I want, the, I want the golden girl on my mantle, <laughs> but no, I'm gonna I'm gonna get you into the the TV Academy. Uh, what else? Are we Transformers. Yeah, I did the voice. Optimus of Sound Prime. Wave. Uh, yeah, the voice of Soundwave. He's. Uh, I did that voice for them. It's another video game. Another video game. I've done a lot of video games, and I do a lot of different character voices too. Like, I don't know if you're gonna mention this, or World of Warcraft. I've done more than 40 voices for them alone. And let's, they're all different voices. I mean, well, there's one <laughs> iconic character I play for them. Is, his name is Stitches. And Stitches <laughs> is this gigantic zombie. Probably if he was in the room, he's probably about seven feet tall. He's got teeth in his belly. He's got an arm with a cleaver, another arm with a machete. And he's got an arm growing out of his back that's got like a sickle. <laughs> and uh, you don't want to run into that guy in a dark alleyway. And he likes to say things like, Stitches want to play. Would you like to play with Stitches? <laughs> yeah, Stitches, let's play. <laughs> Your head goes he off. Loves to, he loves to <laughs> just kill people. He's, he's great, isn't Stitches. it? Stitches. He loves to do it. He's just wants <laughs> I'll to bet play. He, does. he laughs all. You laugh all the way to the morgue with that guy. Stitches. But yeah, I played it. Which I, way would you like to die? Oh. <laughs> so I've been orcs. I've been fire giants. All kind of things. Dragons. All kind of characters. Let fun. me hear your dragon voice. Well, there's one. Okay, let's say here's a smoky one that can smoke, breathe fire. Who dare come into my lair? I, with one voice, one breath, can disintegrate you. <laughs> <laughs> You heard it here first, folks. Unless you play World of Warcraft, is, you heard it there. That first. is video game gold, <laughs> right there. Starcraft, Warcraft. How many crafts are you doing? My gosh! I just do my acting craft and do it as much as I possibly can. Two thousand and one maniacs. You were the butcher. I did that movie so long ago. I don't even remember. I remember Robert Englund is in the movie. I remember that. Freddy um, Krueger from Nightmare on Elm Street. So, yeah, that was a movie I did, and it was fun. I did that probably. You do so two, many of them, you, don't, you can't remember. I don't write it all down. I mean, it's on IMDb, remember. and I just, you know, I, like I said, I'm always cast looking, the forward checks, the next but one, I don't remember. looking forward to the next project. That's what I do. I mean, I love what I do for a living. I love it. Oh, man. It's, but I'm always we're getting paid to have fun. I'm to, to get the next one going, you yeah. know? I'm not sitting on my laurels. I think about what I already did. I'm thinking about what's next, you know? I worked with Robert England slash Freddy Krueger on uh, Sliders. Remember that Sliders. show? Jerry O'Connell, they, uh, they slid into an alternate universe. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Every episode. And it was great because they literally could make up any worlds they want because yeah. it was an alternate Earth. Mm -hmm. So it was, um, and they were kind of ripping off a lot of the big movies at the time, Terminator. Okay. Um, so I, they slid onto this robot world, and it was created by Robert England, who was the scientists that that have created all the robots. So I was like the Terminator. Half my face was blasted away with a, a ray gun. What was your objective as his robot? What were you trying to do? I was like his enforcer. Oh, so you right? were trying to get I was a Jerry piece. I was the guys. key piece or peacekeeper by you know killing whoever. Okay, that's peace. Didn't didn't go along <laughs> with the regime, uh, but I got to drive a Hummer, which oh, was that uh, fun. That had a laser that would blast uh, blast people. That was uh, that was kind of cool. It was the third season. The first two were done up in Canada, mm -hmm. like a lot of shows are yeah. these days, and then they brought it down to L.A. and uh, it was the the first season in L.A. So uh, uh, Jerry O'Connell was was cool. I. I, I I grab him and literally throw him, you know, twenty feet up into the side of a building. Do they so have it's a great descender? when you're a cyber mm -hmm. cyborg. You got that kind of. So was that a stunt man? What was that a strength. dummy? What would, they, what would they do to do that? Or that was just all CGI? Uh, I think I grabbed him. Okay. And and went to throw him, and then a stunt guy goes face first into the wall, and then of course Jerry's. I get Low it. angle, okay. you see Jerry fall on the ground, and uh, it's all Hollywood effects. <laughs> but that was a that, uh, that was a fun show to do. Robert England was going, I got working with Freddy Krueger. Really nice guy. Anger management. 
With Charlie Sheen? No, Anger Management with Adam Sandler and Jack Nicholson. Oh, the movie? Yes, the movie. The feature film. That's even mm. better. You were the air marshal. What happened in the air? Well, what happens is that's, that's what set up the whole movie pretty much. Uh, Adam Sandler's character comes on the plane. He is not very, his character is not very aggressive, and he's not very, uh, he doesn't speak up for himself as much as he should. Right. So, he, been unbeknownst to him, he's been set up by his girlfriend, so he can become more aggressive and more, you know. Manly. About himself, taking care of himself. Right, Speaking right. up for himself. Anyway, the air marshal wasn't in on this, but what happens is, he gets on the plane, there's a guy sitting in his seat. So instead of arguing about it, he just moves over to where the guy's supposed <laughs> to be sitting, and it happens to be sitting next to Jack Nicholson's character. Right. So anyway, I come over, because um, he's Jack Nicholson's telling him, you ought to get your headsets on and watch this movie. And So he keeps talking to the flight attendant, right. and she's not coming with the headset. So finally she's walking past him, and he touches her on the arm and says, may I please? And she's like, sir? And she gets upset. And right. Then, the air marshal comes over who's having a bad day, which you find out at the end of the movie why. He has no idea. The flight attendant's in on it. Jack Nicholson's character is in on it. Everybody's in on it except for me and right. Adam's character. So I come over and I start talking to him about, you know, no problems on the plane and, sir, you need to calm right. down. Eventually I taser him and, uh, <laughs> and it ends up he has to go to, he has to eventually go to court and go to anger management. And Jack Nicholson's the actual anger management coach that he's got to go through to get certified so he can get out of that class and all the craziness that goes on after that. So, yeah. It was funny. That was a, a big, was a big movie on. at the time. Lots of fun to work on. Pirates of the Caribbean. What was that again? What was it called? Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> what was yeah, it like no. to work with Johnny Depp? You get that question all the time. Yeah, well, a lot of people ask me, you know, what do you think Johnny Depp thinks about working with you? What's it like to work with Isaac? That's, that's what you know what? When asking. you get to work with Isaac, you're really going to have a good time because you know Isaac's going to come. He's going to be a professional, <laughs> and he's going to be there on time. He's going to be nice on set. Guy. He's going to be ready, and you're going to have a good time. And you're definitely going to be a nice guy, and uh, going to treat the laser with respect, which is why they do, and treat everybody with respect also, from the crew to the PAs to everybody, because we're all making a project together, and it's all working together, and every everybody on the set is important. Everybody's treated important in my eyes. You know what? These uh, a lot of these actors don't get that, you know, yeah. and they come on. It's like, hey, I am the star, or the guest star, or whatever, and and it's like they don't get that these other you're coming into a show for for one week, right? Mm -hmm. And these guys have been working on it for years, and, and they're a family, and and you come in and and they don't treat everybody with respect, which is sad. But you know, I always try to dwell on the positives when I'm on there. <clears throat> Like a lot of times, I go to these conventions. I go and sign autographs at, and sure. For some reason, people are like, "So who's the worst person you worked with?" Or who's, <laughs> who's? I'm like, you know, I don't really think. I don't. I think about the people that I really had a great time working with together. And I don't try to dwell on the negatives. I think on the positives, and I'm not going to name any names of people who were hard to work with because they don't even register in my mind. You know, I just go ahead, do my job. And leave. And then, you know, but I, I always think about the great people I got the chance to work with. I mean, like Sigourney Weaver, wonderful one to work with. I mean, Tim Allen was great to work with. Johnny Galaxy Depp. Quest. Yeah, they, I met them on Galaxy Quest. Talk Quest. about that. That was your first job, right? When you no, my first LA? job when I got to Los Angeles. I got here in May of that year. In August of that year, on my birthday, I was on the X-Files. That was my first oh, job. Oh, X-Files was the first one. My first job was on the X-Files, yep. Yeah. Episode called The Triangle. What and a great was, show that was. And Chris Carter directed that episode. He got an Emmy for that episode. I'm, I'm not sure if it was because I was in it that he got it. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe because he's just a Super great artist and, and he's really good. So, yeah, it was great to work with and great part to be a part of that. You know, Jillian Anderson, wonderful woman to work with. David Duchovny. Oh, I uh, love that show. I was, it was, I was They were great huge, people, great cast of, of people there. It was fun. Yeah. I read for it, I kid you not, mm -hmm. six times. Okay. They'd bring me in, I'd go to producers. I wouldn't get it. They'd bring me in for another role, I'd go to producers. I wouldn't get it. But they don't do that if they don't like you. That's true. So they kept, they, they were trying to, I mean, the casting director said, we're trying to find something. Something. That's great, man. That's, they that... didn't find something. <laughs> it didn't. But, that's, but, but then they, they hired me for some other show. 
uh, when X Files was canceled. No, this was toward the end, right? Yeah. And then then the show got canceled. Yeah, that so. was the first year. But it I came did. They from did hire Canada me for something. But but if they like you, they bring you back. Definitely. They, you know, that's a good thing. Yes. The Galaxy Quest. You mentioned Sigourney Weaver. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of hours. That was huge, and it was so funny because it was a takeoff on Star Trek and all the sci-fi yes. films, and they nailed it. And it's a takeoff on the conventions around that, that's sci-fi right. that's conventions. Right. So it's that was another component to it. But I, I had a three-hour makeup on that movie every single day. Oh. So you don't see my face at all. Three hours, but hey. I was having a great time. I got to play two characters in the movie, so that was wonderful. And you get the residuals, whether they mm-hmm. see your face or not. Yeah, well, I did say some words, so it was a good time. What the heck? And what were the two characters? Uh, one was he was on the bridge, and one of the, another one was a character who was chasing Sigourney Weaver and Tim Allen down this long corridor because they were trying to press this blue button. It's so funny that movie. That part of the movie got cut out also because there's a scene where you see Sigourney Weaver. She's got her costume on it's all zipped up to the top right and then the next thing you see her it's zipped down to here but you don't see what happened right and that's what our scene was our scene was me and this other actor were, were the aliens and they're chasing them down they're trying to stop the ship from blowing up to press this button we have this interaction with them i'm like my lines like the general warned us of your tricks you know and finally um my partner goes to uh to me he's like you know what this one's strangely attractive. He's talking about Sigourney Weaver. And he unzips her top? No, she, he starts kind of going towards her. She goes, okay. So she coaxes us towards us, and as she's doing that, she starts right. unzipping her <laughs> top. He's like, hey, right? So he comes over. And her, her problem is she doesn't like the fact that her character is this one-dimensional. Everybody just lusts right. after. Right. So when she gets us to a certain area, she says, Computer, closed blast door, whatever, number seven. And this boar comes out and crushes both of us. This green ooze comes out. <laughs> and that's what happens. But that's not in the movie. But it's in the deleted scenes, though. But, yeah. Yeah, because most of the time, mm-hmm. she she, had a she shows up. a lot of, well, but, no, she shows a lot of cleavage. And, and hmm. I'm trying to think of her movies. They, they didn't. No, no, no. In, in Galaxy Quest. Oh, from they, that point yeah. on. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Oh, oh so. Well, that's interesting then, because she's all buttoned up, and then all of a sudden it's down here for the rest of the movie. So, yeah, or at least the rest of those scenes Continuity. around that movie. So, you know. But it was a good movie. It was good times, yeah, and, she's and a lot terrific. of great people, too. She's tall. She's like six, six foot, feet tall. It? Yes. A man my height likes a lady six feet tall. So, any ladies out there that, wanna, that are six feet tall, that are looking for <laughs> something yeah, like this? Looking for that. <laughs> There's this hashtag, girls, right there. Um, Planet of the Apes. Yep. With Tim Burton, remake of the yeah. classic. You know, I saw the old one on TV recently. It still holds up. Yeah. Charlton Heston, that movie still holds up. But it but does. but talk about uh, your experience on that. All right. Well, that one was another thing. I didn't even have an agent yet when I got that movie. And and uh, what happened was I was working at Universal Studios when I first moved out here. I was working at Waterworld and Wild West on show here. And then, you know. I was a tour guide. Oh, you were really? At Universal Studios. I was wild. I was a wild, I was a wild West guy and a Waterworld guy. So I was. But anyway, one of the guys in the stunt guys was like, yo, man, Isaac, they're getting ready to pick act. They're getting ready to pick stunt guys to be in Planet of the Apes. You ought to go down there and, and see if you can get on there. And I'm like, yeah, but I want to be an actor and I want to be a stunt guy in it. He said, well, hey, they're picking stunt guys, and who knows? You never know, right. So what I did, I said I went over there, and so um, Rick Baker had this wonderful studio over in Glendale area. I oh, yeah, he was the top makeup guy. And so I went over there, and there was like two or 300 guys in there waiting to be picked. Oh, so yeah. eventually they just lined us all up in a, in a row. Right. And Tim Burton and Rick Baker just went down the line looking at our facial structure. Sure. They picked me out of the line and said, okay, they sent me straight to makeup. I went wow. and got that whole head casting thing where you wrap your head and you can't hardly breathe. You got these little straws, this warm steam. Yeah, it's a up. whole face mold. If you yeah. if you have um, um, if you're claustrophobic, it's it doesn't work. Easy. No, it's not going to be. Now, easy when I did Star Trek and they did that, they said you don't know how many actors they had to let go after casting because mm-hmm. they couldn't sit still and yeah, you know. 
And you breathe through your little straws for like an hour while they're taking the sed mold. But it anyway, it feels sorry. like an hour. It's only twenty minutes. It feels like an hour, but it's only like twenty twenty five minutes. But it does it feels feel like, like a long time. It feels like. <laughs> but anyway, but anyway, they long pick story you out. Short, they pick me out. So now I'm on the movie as a stunt guy. But I, I didn't have an agent at the time. But I was with. As one of the uh, gorilla apes. But I wanted to be an actor still. Of course. So what I had a commercial agent at the time. And I went to them, I say, look, I'm on movie of Planet Apes as a stunt guy, but would you please contact them and see whether they would come in, have me come in as an, as an right. audition as an actor? And she said, okay, Isaac, but they don't even have the script finished yet, but okay, right. when they do. So finally, the script was finished. She called me and said, hey, Isaac, they do want you to come in and read as an, for an acting role. I'm like, all right, that's great, because I knew... And I you already couldn't. got the makeup, right? They, they already, already done it the, the, already... once, but what happened was they went in, auditioned in front of Tim Burton and them. Right. Got the call later. They want me to be now an actor. And I ended up playing four characters in the movie. I had to go get my head recast again because this time, (laughs) this time I was going to be a number one makeup. And a number one makeup is where they do the silicone. It's a four hour makeup every single day. So, so, you know, the silicone on, you know, get it in four hours every single day. But it was great because I played four characters in the movie, which meant I was on there eight months. I was on the whole, I was on the run of the movie. And they didn't have to hire three other actors because all they had to do is just put a little bit more gray in my beard, put me in a different costume. Right. I could say different lines. And it was perfect because there was one scene where... And you got paid f- f- as four different characters, right? Yeah, but it's, still, it's almost as if you got paid for one movie. For still. You but know, but how many months was that? Eight months. Nice, long eight-month movie. Gr- on, a, on, a, on an A-list <clears throat> film. That's, that's money in the bank, baby. There were some great people, too, so it was fun. That was, I got to work with Michael Clark Duncan, finally. I, I doubly won Scorpion King and um, before that, and then I got to work with him. So it was great. He was a cool Hey, guy. you guys are very similar <laughs> types. You don't know how many times I still get it to this day. You look <laughs> like that actor from... I'm saying the actor that was in Anger Management? No, no, not him. <laughs> You mean the guy that was in Pirates of the Caribbean? No, not that guy. And I'm like, well, that's who I am, you know. And they'll tell me about the Green Mile. Guy that was in Shawshank Redemption. That no, that's Morgan passed Freeman. Away. No, he was that's in the Green Morgan. Mile. Shawshank Redemption was in Morgan Freeman. Green oh, Mile Green is... Mile. Sorry. <clears throat> yeah. So, but yeah, he was a great guy. Nice guy. Uh, Tim Burton, big fan of his. He... I, I'm six five. I'm a pretty big fan of his. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> his new series Wednesday. Is on Netflix right now. It's fantastic. Have you I just seen saw it? the first episode last night, and I'm looking forward to seeing the rest. I wish it was more than eight episodes, but what the heck? I'm going to watch them all. It's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, he really does a, a, a spin on the Adams family. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen it, obviously, it's focused on the daughter uh, of the Adams family, Wednesday. Adams, uh, played by Jenna Ortega. She is fantastic. Yes, she is. Man, she nails it. And um, what's interesting is as I'm watching this, she's this dark goth girl, right, that doesn't follow any of the rules at the school. And, of course, the family, they're like monsters, right? So the the creepier, the better she likes, you know. Mm -hmm. But but to most people, she's abnormal. But she's a role model. The little girls, because she she doesn't take any crap from anybody, right? Yeah, she, she's 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 she, she does things he, that she sticks up bullied. for people. She does everything her way. Yeah, and she has very high moral values. And she's even though she's an too. oddball, that, that that's a that's a good role model. Yeah, but is she really? If you think about it, is she really an oddball, or is everybody just trying to conform to their friends and what their friends are doing? Think about it. You think about these kids that were bullying right. their brother. Yeah. They don't, well, there's they might, bullies at school, and this. Yeah, yeah, yeah are they, they normal? No. no and they want to conform the, and be con- accepted because they want to be like conformity. Oh, like that that's guy. you're absolutely right. That's yeah. the, that's a good word. If you guys haven't seen Wednesday, you got to see it on Netflix. It's terrific. That's my tip of the day. Um, what else? Uh, you know what? We're going to take a quick break uh, for this promo from SFN Science Fiction News. And we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Lisa Marie. Hello, darling. I'm Elvira, Mr. Seven Dark. I am Daniel Roebuck. I'm Buzz Aldrin. I am Jonathan Frakes. I am James Pitt from Avatar. My name is Natasha Alam from True Blood. Hey, I'm Brian Krause from Charm. We're watching science fiction news. Science fiction news. 
Science fiction news. Science fiction news. Science fiction news. Science fiction news. Science fiction news. Science fiction news. Here, out there with Jeff Rector and Isaac C. Singleton Jr., of course, man of TV and film. Uh, we've done a lot of these uh, science fiction conventions all over the country, all over the world. Uh, I love meeting the fans. That's I gotta tell you. That's one of my favorite things about it: running to the fans and talking to them and having them tell me their experiences and even their children's experiences and. I like going internationally, too. It's so, so much fun. Like this year, I got a chance to go to something called CovCon, which was in Coventry, England. And we flew over to England. I think it was I thought it was maybe a coven of witches. No, it that was, was Coventry. Coventry. Coventry is the city where Lady Godiva rode naked in the streets because she was advocating for the peasants and the people who lived there because her husband was a lord of the area and he was trying to tax them too much. And so she talked to him about it, and she said, he said, well... I want to go to Coventry. <laughs> the women ride around naked on horses. <laughs> well, I think this took place in the 1500s, I believe. I forgot what year, but anyway, he said Pretty her, racy for the 1500s. Yeah, and he said to her... Racy for today. If you ride through the streets naked on horseback, then I might consider lowering the taxes. for the, So she did, and that's what she's known for now. So lowering, lowering the tax. So supposedly, <laughs> everybody in town, out of respect for her, would not look as she rode past. Oh. To give her modesty, but at the same time, she did do it, and that's why. She, there was one guy in the corner going. And that's where the. Uh, she, that's where uh, the. She that, rode what by. That, what is that that term? Somebody who peeps a peeping tom. That's where that term supposedly come from. Because solely some guy named Tom tried to look. <laughs> <laughs> I was peeping, peeping. Lady Godiva. That's you know if you if these common <laughs> phrases like peeping Tom, they all have origins. They do. And if you looked them up, they, some of those are crazy stories. But anyway, talk no. about the Coventry. Uh, so anyway, convention. it was about it was it, that CovCon was really about ex Bond girls who were signing. But they flew me over and flew another guy over and came from the states and I got this sign because I was in Mandalorian, Pirates of the Caribbean, and the voices I did for Batman Arkham. Oh, that's right. And you were for, in the, uh, the Batman shows, too. Yeah, so I, I signed for a different, few different characters and Planet of the Apes also. But they were going to fly me in on a third and fly me back out on the eighth. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to fly over here just to fly back out a few days later. No. So I called British Airways and said, hey, what would it cost me to my change, stay. change And yeah. I just found my own hotel room in, in Kensington, part of London. You and make a I, vacation uh, out of it. Yeah, and I went to the Natural History Museum all day one day. I went to Bath. I went to Stonehenge. I went to Windsor Castle, which is where the Queen lived at the time. I uh, went to Piccadilly was Circus Henry, one night. Harry, and uh, Meghan Markle? Oh, no, that was... They weren't even in the country that at was, that point. No, they weren't there. That, was, that, was, before, that was before their time, but you can mm -hmm. catch them on their Netflix special. <laughs> which, <laughs> With that face just getting made. great reviews Yes, right now. So, you know, but uh, I had a great time. England is wonderful, but also I love doing these signing events because you do get to meet the fans. They get to tell you exactly what they felt about the project, and you get to interact with them, and understand why they like these different things. You literally get to talk to them and understand what they're doing, and and I like that because they give you value. You learn about another you... culture too, right? Oh, yeah, but yeah, but I'm talking about even where I mean, I went to Missoula, Montana this year and signed. I went to learn a new culture Kentucky. in Missoula, Montana. That's <laughs> I had a great time. <laughs> Love Montana's signing. beautiful. It is. I did a celebrity golf tournament in Billings once. It's it God, is truly call big it God's sky. Country. It really is. Big sky, for sure. It's beautiful. It really is. Um, uh, I was in England. Uh, in Stonehenge, did they have a fence around it, or was it still open? Okay, it's not when a, I went, not, there was a, a chain-link fence around it. I'm like, What? I yeah, can't touch people, it. People were trying to walk in there. They, people it was chipping off the stone and, picking, and right, trying to what? take home rocks as souvenirs, and, and they, they even had graffiti type people that want to go. Do that Do you believe of, that? I know, but you know Idiots. they've had. It's so funny. They've been having graffiti since medieval days, though. 
Graffiti has been around for the really? longest time. Yeah. Like when I've gone over to, like when I told you I lived in Germany, so I've gone a lot of different places and they'll talk about how they found graffiti on stuff that was taking place way back in the Roman era days, way back a long time ago when the Colosseum was just built. The graffiti has been around. Not this, I guess just humans just do that. You know, well, you know, if you've ever seen these a... ancient alien shows, you know, on the rocks, they paint the aliens. Mm-hmm. That was actually graffiti. They don't. <laughs> Zagreb they was, was like, here. Oh, <laughs> these aliens <laughs> left us these. No, they were graffiti. That's artists. not a hieroglyph. That's that Zagreb was that's here. A, that's that's, that's great that graffiti glyphics. <laughs> <laughs> best uh, best convention. Well, my favorite is still going to Comic Con down in San Diego. Uh, I, I love it. It's just so gigantic. Yeah, I love going to see the new projects that are gonna come out. I like going to see the vendors who are selling all these different types of things from figurines, Buttons, different types of clothes, clothing, all to, kind of stuff. Yeah. man, I love it. I, I, I mean, it's just like a gigantic toy land for me. It is. I, 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 I buy something mm-hmm. every year to have a, a souvenir to take back with me. I'm still, still a geek at heart. And uh, I've got a memorabilia collection. Oh, you do, yeah. At home, so I always like to pick up a little something. Worst convention? You know what? Once again, I'm more the guy who's always thinking about the positives, so I can't think of anything that was really that bad <laughs> that I've gone to. I've gone to smaller conventions that maybe somebody who was a superstar would be like, oh, this is too small for me. But I got to really have a more even intimate conversation with the people there because it wasn't a line of people that I had to rustle, hu- right. keep hustling them through. So I got a chance to talk to these people longer and answer some of their questions because a lot of times they want to ask me about how to get in our business and how to right. how what they should do to try to navigate through becoming a voiceover guy or an actor or film actor or whatever. So I'm happy. So every time I go to these conventions, I'm having a great time. I really am. Yeah, it's... Um and they, these fans come up, they know your lines mm-hmm. from the shows and the movies. They go, remember when the, you were in that scene? And they, I don't even remember that scene. You just go, oh, yeah, right. That was a great moment. I remember they know all the facts. They know all the details. One fan that I remember the most, this girl came up. She was sobbing, crying, couldn't her, couldn't get her words out. And finally... What it was is she was such a big fan of Johnny Depp <laughs> that to just be near somebody who had worked with Johnny Depp. You're the closest had thing there. <laughs> voice taken away from her. It was so funny. I'm like, wow, yeah, he's a great guy. I was telling her, she, she couldn't. I'm glad talk. I'm touching you. No, <laughs> was, I'm a friend of Johnny Depp. Was, it buddy. was great. But, you know, man, Johnny Depp is a great guy. He really is. He really is a great guy. Well, he got, uh, hey, he got absolved of that whole court thing, right? Well, I think that finally it was the, bad for the both public, of them, but but, but at yeah. least he, his name was cleared. So yeah, the, so the public saw the true light. But yeah, he's a great guy, truly. Great actor. Mm. Oh, excellent actor, man. No, no doubt about it. Yeah, Donnie Brasco, mm. English guy can play a Brooklyn mobster. That's talent. Yeah, baby. What do you want to tell? I think we're almost out of time. What do you want to tell the fans out there? I just want to say hey, thank you very much for tuning in. I'm Isaac C. Singleton, Jr. Hope you enjoy the work I've done and hope you enjoy the work I do in the future. Thank you very much for even taking your time out to listen to this podcast today and have a great day. I always like to say you can do and be anything you want in this world. Don't let anybody tell you you can't. Thank you so much for joining us. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. And we'll see you in the movies in 2023. God bless. Happy holidays.